Thanks. Okay, uh, so I will talk about Burp. This is an uh, experience-based uh, talk, so it's mostly uh, the fact that I use this tool for years and I have some uh, specific uh, skills um, probably related to this tool, so I will uh, just give uh, a lot of tips and tricks related to Burp. Uh, first, uh, who I am, I am the founder of a very small security company, which is Agari. Uh, I'm the only one employee, so I'm the boss, that's cool. Um, so I, everything is going very fine in this company, everybody is very uh, kind and everything. Um, I'm doing a lot of uh, web-based penetration testing. Um, I am not affiliated at all with Sportswigger, which is the uh, author of Burp Pro. Uh, either as a guy or as a company, I didn't uh, provide any services to them or whatever. Uh, however, uh, I used uh, Burp for years, and even before I was using some other proxies. And I am doing this kind of stuff for something like 13 years, and playing with Burp for some more than six or seven years. Um, a few warnings first. Uh, this is not about uh, methodologies. So I if you are looking for some training on how to do the recon fast, how to look for this or that kind of bug, you have some very good uh, uh, references uh, online or not. I mean, the chapter 21 of the Web Application Account book is very, very, very good uh, related to methodologies. So you, you probably need to uh, read it at least once. <coughs> Uh, second warning, this is not Burp 101. Uh, I will not uh, spend any time on uh, introducing uh, which kind of tools are available in Burp. And if you have no clue about what is Burp, you will probably not fully get the value of this talk, sorry. Uh, but you have some nice uh, introduction stuff uh, that you can read online. And everything which is um, um, demonstrated during the talk was tasted by myself on some very recent version of Burp, either 1.5.11 or 1.5.14, and it should work on every recent version, uh, but the pro version only. Um, differences between the pro and the free version and comparison with Zap. Uh, so Burp free is way too old, and you have some uh, limitations like you don't have any scanner uh, tool in the free version, you have some speed limitations in Intruder, so I spent most, most of the time in Intruder or Repeater, so it's very uh, inefficient to use uh, the free version, and you, have, you don't have any save and restore feature. So if you are working, uh, I mean professionally, on some engagement, there's absolutely no reason to stick to the free version. It's something like 300 euros, so it's a few hours of your time, so it's really uh, near free. And Zap, uh, which is a OWASP project, I have uh, so much personal legacy uh, regarding my workflow, habits, extensions, so it's hard for me to switch to Zap. It would be very costly. And I, have some, I had some bad feedback years ago uh, related to Zap. I'm not sure the current state, but the fact is that uh, when doing uh, black box penetration testing, if you get some false negative, it's a b very big problem. So uh, I'm quite confident in Burp, and I would need to be as much confident in another tool in order to switch. So I, I will stick to, to Burp Pro. Um, this is an overview of the subject I will cover. Uh, so data visualization, uh, GUI navigation, managing state, I mean uh, backup, restoring, some very common tasks which are quite easy to do, to do uh, in Burp. Uh, an overview of some uh, not well-known intruder payloads, and then a quick focus on mobile applications, extensions, and macros. And I should finish on uh, a demo regarding macros, which are sometimes considered as um, too difficult to work with in Burp, and I will try to show it's not that hard. So first, data visualization. Um, during a pen test, you will encounter a lot of different formats, uh, depending on the underlying technologies used by the application. And you have a few formats which are um, um, 
um, available by default in Burp, and a few other which are available via extensions. So uh, this is uh, very basic. This is uh, an application which is using uh, all the GPC parameters. So GPC is uh, get, post, and cookie. And as you can see, you have some uh, color uh, highlighting. So it's uh, so something like uh, not so unreadable. But uh, if you want to, for example, to suppress one parameter, you will have to look for the semicolon or the ampersand, and you will probably miss it. And if you do not miss it, you will probably uh, uh, spend uh, 20 seconds or 10 seconds looking for the colon, and it's already too much. So uh, you have the. So we are in the raw panes, and if you switch to params, I think some people notice it's Playboy. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and it's Playboy dot de. And oh, okay, so, sorry. So if we switch to parameters, you, you get the same data, but with uh, a nice uh, display. And what is very easy is that you can suppress very easily one parameter. And more important, if you want to convert one parameter from, uh, for example, post to get, you need to take care of uh, URL encoding. So you need to convert your space to uh, plus or percent 20. You need to convert your uh, equal sign to percent 3D, etc. So this is boring, and this is not uh, what you are paid for. So you just need to, uh, for example, uh, press URL and switch to cookie or body, or body, and then Burp will take care automatically of the encoding and everything. So uh, it's not. Um, very advanced, but it's useful, and that's what you need uh, when you spend your full day uh, doing uh, black, box, black box pen testing. So, thanks to the cocktail uh, guy. Thank you. It's very good. So, we have a few cocktails. Sorry. This is rum and lemon. It's very tasty. Um, back to the talk. Uh, this is XML data. Uh, as you may know, uh, I'm fond of uh, XML and XSLT, but this is nearly unreadable. And you have a XML tab here, and if you click on this tab, you get this kind of output uh, where the document is uh, laid out uh, with uh, indentation and everything, and um, so it's uh, much more easier to, to read this way. This is uh, a AMF, which is Action Messaging Format, so it's related to Flash applications, and it's a, a mix of binary and uh, binary data and strings. So you can get uh, some feeling about uh, what is inside this request. Uh, this is your typical reward demo, uh, but if you um, so you st we still have the AMF tab. And if we switch to this tab, you have uh, everything which is uh, clearly uh, display. And you have uh, the type of uh, the data and, of course, its value. So it's m much more readable than the ASCII and uh, binary mix. And if you are in Windows technologies, uh, this is view state. This is a real life uh, view state, so it's that huge. And it's uh, quite difficult to manage. So you have a view state uh, tab, which will uh, clearly display a lot of uh, very um, uh, clear string name value. And you get the array, the, the type of the data, and everything. So we get something similar to AMF, but for view state. <coughs> so this is by default. Uh, if you, for example, if you made some very specific protocol in your pen test, you can always uh, code uh, an extension which will add a tab and process the specific format. And a few formats are pretty common, but not included in Burp. So we have uh, extensions uh, for that. So this is uh, this is uh, JSON. Um, so this screenshot is uh, from the Twitter API, and. Um, what can we say? Uh, Twitter is uh, using uh, locales only um, headers, and they are sorted alphabetically. 
so there's probably some front end doing some post processing. The fact is that if your application, your extension detects this kind of content type, you, you can apply some uh, specific processing that we will do. And this is the link to this extension. And this, we get uh, this kind of output, which is uh, much uh, easier to read than the previous one. Mm. Um, so this extension is uh, 96 uh, lines long, but uh, most of the content is used to create the tab or to create buttons or to associate uh, event to buttons and whatever. And in fact, you have only one line on, uh, so nearly 1% of the extension, which is related to the functionality itself. And it's this line. So everything which is uh, doable in Python, this is in Python, uh, you can uh, get an extension uh, doing it in only reusing a template and modifying one line. So even if you have never uh, code any burp extensions, it's very, 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 very easy to uh, do this kind of processing. And as you can see, you can uh, choose the annotation. Uh, do you want uh, to um, get it in order or not? Do you want to sort it? So this is the kind of things that you will uh, decide in this very specific line of code. So just reuse the template and use uh, Python uh, libraries to do what is needed. This is JavaScript. Uh, we get more and more JavaScript in web application uh, in order uh, to uh, um, reduce uh, bandwidth or to obfuscate their code, you get some very uh, packed uh, JavaScript, which is nearly unreadable. Uh, so it's very, very hard to understand where is uh, the functions and which kind of variables we get. And so we have a, a few extensions which are dedicated to JavaScript. Uh, both extensions are using uh, libraries from jsbotifier.org. Uh, one of them is using Reno to call JavaScript from Java, so it's using the um, JavaScript API, so it's not very uh, elegant. Uh, and another one is using uh, Python to access the Python API. So it's much more um, easy to read and to understand and manage and everything. So uh, this one is pretty efficient and you get this kind of output. So it's always the same thing. You, you get your request, your response, and you just need to switch to a specific tab to have your data uh, nicely displayed. So it's very, very useful. And as you can see, it's very easy to uh, identify the variables and the methods and everything. Okay, next, next, uh, last one is Protobuf. Uh, Protobuf is a protocol designed by Google, which is used in a lot of their applications, like uh, Google Talk, if I uh, recall correctly. And these extensions allow to decode Protobuf messages. And if you have a .proto file, which is uh, like the grammar for um, Protobuf, you can also uh, uh, get some tampering functionality. So you just need to load this, ex this, this extension, and then you can read and tamper any data, uh, Protobuf data going through your proxy. Okay, so that's, uh, this was uh, uh, data visualization, and uh, now GUI navigation. Burp is a GUI tool, so you will spend a lot of time using the GUI, um, but I'm mainly a command line guy, so each time I need to put my hand on the mouse, uh, I think I'm losing some time, and so I need to, uh, I was looking to optimize um, the way to conduct Burp from the, from the keyboard only. So, uh, what we will cover? First, contextual button. Um, this is very basic. You have uh, two kinds of buttons. This one is a uh, documentation. This one is a uh, restore default. And this, this is uh, two buttons are contextual. So, if you are uh, in a very obscure functionality of Burp, you, you have no clue about, 
you only need to click on uh, the documentation button and you will go straight to the specific part of the documentation. So it's very easy, for example, if you forbid, uh, like me, which kind of payload is a pitch, uh, pitchfork or cluster bomb or anything, you just click to click the, you just need to click this button. And for default, it's very useful too, because if you set up a very complex uh, burp configuration using macro, using session handling, and whatever, a lot of complicated, complicated stuff, uh, and you need to restore the default for one specific uh, part of the burp tool, you just need to click this button, and there's no way you will neg negatively impact other parts of the configuration, like your macro. I mean, if you spend, um, for example, 20 minutes designing your macro and testing it, you don't want to break uh, that by, modify, by modifying something else uh, somewhere. So this is very useful. And of course, sometimes you have no default and you only get the documentation button. And yes, the documentation is very well done, so it's easy to read and it's really useful. Uh, now, hotkeys, so as I said, I, I prefer not to leave the, the keyboard. Uh, in Burp Suite, you have uh, nearly 80 uh, actions, which can be reached uh, via hotkeys, and around 30 of them are defined by default. So you need to go to Option and then MISC, and then you have the hotkey configurations. And this is a few hotkeys which are uh, useful. Uh, most of them are defined by default. So you have the classic uh, cut and copy and pass stuff, which is uh, like in your uh, word processing software. You have some uh, decoding, so you can uh, convert uh, URL, HTML, and Base64 data, decode and encode uh, from the keyboard. So um, you can do in-place uh, replacement or not. I mean, if the um, part of Burp you are dealing with is, for example, um, the sitemap, you will get a pop-up because it's read-only. But if you are in repeater, you will uh, modify on-place um, on uh, the data. So it's uh, quite uh, well done. Uh, you can switch uh, from uh, tool to tool using, uh, so it's control shift and the first letter of the, of the tab. So it's uh, very useful. And my own personal favorite is um, uh, issue repeater request. Uh, why? This one is not defined by default. And I usually uh, use control G because there's a go button in repeater. So uh, what is the problem with the go button? You are dealing with repeater. So you are uh, manually testing something in the application and you are uh, modi modifying some data, and then you need to take your mouse, go to the Go button, click on Go, on go and, gain, and then um, click back in the text area to gain the focus again. So it's like free mouse click for nothing, just for issuing a request. So you just need to focus on um, your request and, it, and it control uh, G each time you want to test that and you keep the focus, I mean, you keep the focus uh, in the window and you keep the focus in your mind on what you are really doing and you, you don't need to, to lose some uh, concentration or anything or, or time using your mouse and going to this uh, go button. Ah, this one is funny. Um, in a Burp Forum, so I'm lurking in Burp Forum quite often, and we very often uh, got this question. Uh, we need to, to get a way to auto-scroll in the history window. The fun fact is uh, that it's already there, but nobody uh, noticed that. So by default, in uh, history, uh, every, every new request is stacked to the bottom of the history. So you need to take your mouse and scroll, so it's, you are still using the mouse, which is evil. Uh, so what to do? You only need to click on this button, and then the history will be sorted uh, by um, request number in um, inverse. Um, I mean, the, the, the latest one will be on the top. And so that is exactly what you are looking for when you are looking for auto-scrolling. Uh, Unless, um, I mean, most people uh, believe uh, the request will go to the bottom and then you really get some auto-scroll. Uh, you don't need that, you just need to pop up to the, to the top and then it's uh, displayed um, 
automatically and so you, you can get a very uh, easy way to get some auto scrolling. Um, custom payload. Uh, in Bear Pro, you get some payload which are shipped with the tool. So you get some list of default user agent or default password or default username and whatever. But you may have some other world lists which are useful. Uh, the usual way is to click on load, uh, go to the file system location where your word list is, and then uh, import the word list. So it's uh, still uh, three or four mouse clicks, which are way too much. And so the way is to go to the introduction menu and configure the payload list. And then you get uh, this menu, and you can go everywhere and add every word list you are interested in. And then your word list will be reachable with only one click from the intruder uh, tab. So the magic combo is something like the one from Burp, and of course, Nikto and Dearbuster uh, for um, enumerating uh, resources. And FuzzDB is very cool too. And there's a plus near FuzzDB because FuzzDB can be used uh, in the work list uh, situation, but also uh, for error messages. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, yes, in Intruder, you can um, uh, monitor uh, responses for some specific string in order to detect, for example, um, SQL error, message, uh, error messages. And FuzzyB uh, includes this kind of stuff. So you just need to import uh, this uh, regular expression in your um, error um, tab, and then you can get more, more error messages. And last thing, uh, for example, you can uh, compile a list of uh, vouchers that you find online on different uh, online shops, and then you could reuse uh, them uh, as soon as you want to buy uh, something online. Uh, for example, for this very specific conference, uh, you had a voucher which could um, bring your price to 420 euros to zero. And the voucher was speaker. So, notice and take care next time you go to a conference. Ah, okay, uh, this one is, is very interesting. Um, in Burp, you have some uh, automatic uh, processing, which is, uh, which is done by the scanner tool. And the scanner tool is doing everything uh, in an automatic way. It defines the insertion point, it defines the payload, and everything is done uh, in, a black mod, in a black box uh, way. But you may want to uh, use this feature, but for some very specific uh, injection points. So the way to do it is to send your request to repeater, to intruder, define your own um, injection point, and then use a right click and uh, actively scan a defined insertion point. And then you will uh, use the black box uh, feature, the black box scanner feature of Burp using uh, you um, and um, your insertion point, which were defined by on. So you get the the best of two, the two words, so it, it's very, it's very um, easy. And if you get a lot of parameters, but you are interested only in a very specific one, because you know, for example, that you have a front end which will uh, refuse to process other modified parameters, it's a, a good way to reduce the, the load uh, of uh, brute forcing the application. So managing state. Uh, backups and yes, mostly backups. So, uh, if you are doing some serious pen testing, uh, at least it, it applies for me. I will totally lost notion of time. I, I don't know how much hours I will spend of this uh, specific uh, testing, and of course I will forget to press the save button. And of course, my GVM will crash because uh, the Murphy's law apply, and so you will uh, last a few hours of your work. So uh, it's really bad to lost your work first because uh, usually you get paid for that, and you will not been paid uh, twice because you lost your data. And it's very uh, frustrating to have to redo the same thing that you, you did in the morning just because your GVM uh, crashed uh, during lunch. <coughs>
So uh, you go to option and misc, and then you define some uh, automatic backup configuration. So uh, by default, it's every 30 minutes. Uh, you define the file system uh, location where you want to save your, your backups. And backups are time-stamped, so there's no way you will overwrite uh, previous data with a current backup. So it's, it's well done, and you are sure you will, not, you will at least get your uh, backup from uh, maximum 30 minutes ago. And you can use uh, in-scope items only. If you, if you really get something uh, very large, it could be uh, more efficient, I mean, from a CPU and memory point of view. And of course, click uh, backup and exit, because if you are very uh, tired, you can hit the cross and close burp and lose some uh, processing, uh, some time use span of the tool. So this is um, the um, uh, um, most uh, defensive configuration in order not to lose uh, anything uh, using burp. The, the only negative point is that you will get a small pop-up every 30 minutes saying, uh, I am backupping state, and this is disturbing, and we, we opened a, a ticket uh, on Burp forums in order to not get this pop-up because it's uh, uh, disturbing and you are losing focus on what you are doing. And it's saying that you have spent 30 minutes since last backup. So you, you get a notion of time, and I usually don't want to get a notion of time when I'm doing pen testing. OK, so once you have saved your state, you, you will need to, you can restore it. So um, save and restore is very useful. Uh, if your customers are advanced enough to use Burp themselves, it's uh, very, very practical. So you, you get your, you find some vulnerabilities, you get your POC in the um, repeater tabs, you save the state, you send the Burp, <coughs> the burp uh, backup to your customer, your customer loads that in burp and you just need to click go and in order to reproduce uh, the vulnerability you have found. So it, it could, you can uh, win some time because I think everybody was confronted to this situation where the customer has no clue about how to reproduce or bug. So this is uh, very useful, uh, but your customer need to have a burp pro license. Um, you can also use it to define your own default. If each time you use Burp, you spend five minutes uh, reconfiguring the tool from the default to your own uh, preferred uh, situation, you just need to define what is your ideal um, starting point. You save this uh, as uh, my own default configuration. And each time you begin a new penetration test, you load this uh, um, state file and you get everything defined as you usually uh, want it to be. So this is very cool. So you can define uh, hot keys, uh, automatic backups, the scope, uh, and a lot of things. Uh, the only negative point is that uh, currently um, saving uh, information about the extensions option is buggy. So you will lose this information. And I open a ticket, and we are waiting for, for a patch, but you may consider that everything should work in a few weeks. And just for the story, uh, I have seen some uh, InfoSec companies where the manager is defi defining the scope of the penetration test uh, itself, uh, himself, and he gives a uh, backup to the um, technical guys which, uh, who are doing the pen test, and the um, technical guys are forbidden to modify the scope. So it's something like a legal protection, oh, legal, not really legal, but uh, a kind of protection for the company. It's the manager who have defined the scope, and only him can modify that. So it, it could be, uh, it's uh, somewhat uh, extremist, but um, it works in some companies. Uh, common tasks. So this is very, 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 very common things that you, you need to know. Uh, so usually you will have to write a report uh, at the end of your pen test or ideally during your pen test. And one question which uh, arises often is, OK, for example, I found this um, XSS uh, using a post parameter. Uh, is it uh, vulnerable using get to? Uh, so you just need to take your working request, and you just uh, right click and change request uh, method. And you, if, if you are 
using get, you will switch to post, and if you are using post, you will switch to get. And like in the parameters tab, um, Burp will, ta will take care automatically of the encoding. So you only need to think, I want to test uh, uh, with a, a get method, and you don't need to remember anything. You can switch from get to post and uh, not uh, lost any time uh, wondering about the content type or the content length or whatever. Everything is done uh, automatically. You just need to have the uh, functional vision of what you want to do. Um, Non-proxy aware, aware uh, tools. Uh, so you may have some uh, third-party tools, or you may have some C clients which are not supporting proxies. And of course, you want to get some proxy because you you want to intercept and modify request. Mm. Very good. So. Um, how to do that? You define a new proxy listener that you define as invisible. Invisible means that uh, it will automatically uh, work like a proxy, but present itself as a web server. And so, for example, Skipfish, which is a tool from um, the Google, ta uh, Google guy, uh, Michael Zaleski, is not supporting proxy by default. So you define your listener, which is on the loopback uh, port A7777, and you ask Skipfish to um, attack this port, and then uh, Burp will automatically forward your traffic to, <coughs> to your target, and so you can see whatever is doing your third-party tool, and you can replay and modify and everything. It's very uh, useful. Um, and this is working for C client too, um, because most of the time you have no way to get the proxy feature if it's not included by default. If it's Java, you can play with some environment uh, variables to get proxy support. Uh, but depending on the Java API used by the C client, it may not work. So it could be the only way to do it. Um, okay, back to your report. So you need to take some URL uh, from Burp to your report, or you need to take URL from a browser to Burp. And this, is, this could be complicated to do it uh, manually. You need to um, define the host, the value of the host header and everything. So importing, you just need to um, put a URL in your copy pass buffer, then go to Burp and uh, pass the URL as a request, and everything will be done automatically, like uh, filling the host value, and uh, Burp will use some default values, for example, for the user agent, and everything which is not included in a classic uh, URL. Um, exporting data, uh, you have a feature in Burp which is copy URL, uh, but this feature is very basic. You have uh, no way to work with something else than Burp request, uh, than get request, and you have no way to get the bodies, the cookies, any specific header. Uh, for example, if you are pen, uh, pen testing a mobile application with uh, some uh, specific uh, um, reverse proxies, you, you may need to have a specific header. For example, uh, this is an iPhone or this is an Android uh, device. And so it's very important to get this value when uh, sending URL to your customer or to put in your, in your report. But uh, luckily, there's an extension which is uh, curlit and which will uh, generate a curl command. So it's uh, very similar to a feature which was recently introduced in uh, Chrome Developer Tools. Uh, you, you can uh, get any request and convert it to a curl command. And uh, I think that, um, oh, OK, this is some screenshot. So this is your request. Uh, so as you can see, you need, uh, it's a post. You have some body parameters, and you have a specific cookie. And so using the Burp uh, default feature, it will not work. But uh, using the curl extension, you get uh, this command line. And you can uh, send it to somebody who only needs to, to, to get uh, an operating system uh, running curl. So it could be any Linux or a live CD, a backtrack, or whatever. And just, just uh, pass this command, and it will reproduce uh, the exact uh, request we were you were working on uh, in Burp, so it, it's very, it's very useful. Okay, intro your pilots. 
Um, so I, I will not cover every payload. There are something like uh, 10 of them. Uh, basic authentication. So basic authentication is very basic. Uh, you get a bas 64 string, and which contain a username, a colon, the password. Um, if you look on blogs on how to brute force a basic auth using a burp, you will find some advice like uh, use the prefix or suffix feature, uh, use pre-compiled list that you have uh, generated uh, outside with your shell script, uh, use an extension and a lot of this kind of advice. But of course, there's a much more efficient way to do that. Uh, it's very common to use uh, basic auth, and we have a very uh, specific payload, which is custom iterator. And custom iterator from the documentation will define some positions, up to eight, uh, will define some separator, and then it will generate some payload based on this uh, definition. That's exactly what we want. Uh, for example, you define uh, position one is a list of username, the separator is a colon, position two is the password, um, and you post-process using base 64 because you need to, to get the encoding done. And of course, you need to uncheck a payload encoding because if you keep it checked, it's checked by default, uh, you will get your equal characters converted to percent three day, which is really not the way to brute force a uh, uh, login uh, prompt. And once you, you get the, um, the concept, you can do more. You can do position one is username, position two is a single uh, um, a list with a single item, which is a colon. Posi position three is passwords. Position four is a common suffix, like exclamation marks or uh, some uh, dates, uh, some years. And you, you, can, you keep the same options, and you can uh, get this kind of output, where, as you can see, you get login, which is admin, the colon, the password, which is a password, and then a suffix. So it's uh, this kind of uh, processing you can do automa automatically uh, in BERP. Uh, opaque data. Um, this is a page you can met in a pen test. You have a get, uh, get request with one single parameter. Its name is auth, and you get a huge block of data. And what is very surprising is that you are logged on the application. From the output, uh, your profile, welcome, blah, 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 blah. So uh, you are locked in the application, but you have no session cookie. And so it's, it's supposed to be uh, this, this huge bluff block of data. So uh, um, le let's consider that uh, this is authentication data provided by the client. And we need to check if it's verified server side or not. If it's not uh, verified server side, you, we have a huge problem. So. You will, we will use the character frober. Character frober is a payload which will uh, cycle through the string, and for each character, will uh, generate a new character, which is the ASCII code uh, plus one. So it's very basic. This is a character frober using the default value, and then you get uh, this kind of output. Uh, so this is uh, defined using uh, grep extract. Uh, I can explain later, but I don't have the time right now. And so you are monitoring the state of the answers using uh, this, uh, this is colons. And as you can see, the name of the application is changing. And then the value of the UID uh, field, which is here. And it's very funny. We were user 100, and now we are user 600. So it could be interesting. Uh, what else to say? Uh, when we modify this part, we do not modify uh, this one or this one, as you can see here. So it's probably uh, not uh, 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 CBC, because you will impact the, the whole process. Uh, so it's probably XOR or, or ECB. And once you know that uh, this part is related to the UID, you can use uh, the bit flipper, which will modify bit per bit uh, the value. And you get this kind of output. So you are, we are focused here, here. And we get UID 000, which is probably a, a good way to, to begin the penetration test. And this is an exercise from my Bob training. And as you can see, UID 000 uh, gets you uh, a nice message like, well done, but it's not enough. Y you need to do more. And CSRF token. 
uh, CSRF tokens are a pity for breakfasting because you need to get uh, a valid uh, token each time you process, you submit a form. So uh, what is the point? You get one value in the response, you use it in the next request, and you get a new token that you use in the next request, etc., etc., etc. So um, what you need is recursive get grep. Uh, recursive grep will extract part of the payload, uh, part of the, uh, the answer, and use it in the next payload. So it's exactly what, you, what we are looking for. And this is how to do it. You define, uh, though it's in Intruder, you define a pitchwork attack, and the first payload is uh, related to the CSRF token, and the second one is related to the functionality you want to test, uh, I mean, during your, your pen test. This is just, uh, just to get the work done, and this is what is interesting. And for example, you will try to iterate from 0 to 50. It's, it's dumb, but it, it shows that you can uh, do that without uh, bothering with CSRF token. Uh, uh, some warnings, you need to need only to use only one thread. Uh, if not, you will kill your token as soon as you get it. And using uh, this, this way is twice or three times uh, faster than using macros, depending on you define your macros. And as you can see, uh, each value here is uh, used in the next request, so that's uh, what recursive grep is doing. And uh, once upon a time, you get a, a bingo and you win a flag. How much time? OK, uh, so I will go very fast. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, uh, if you are using Android and um, a proxy Dory in order to redirect your mobile application to Burp, uh, you may, uh, you may um, uh, use the DNS proxy and um, access your Burp history from your mobile uh, device, so you don't need to uh, go to your main computer uh, each time you need to check your, your request. And, but you will uh, break SSL uh, trust model. So for example, if you connect to Play Store, uh, using this kind of setup, you will uh, get this kind of output. Uh, it's in French, it's no connection, please try again. And so what you need to do is import your BubCA certificate in your mobile device. And a very easy way is to uh, just hit this URL from your proxy uh, browser, and you will get the certificate uh, to download uh, directly to, to your mobile application. So it's quite easy. And you get this output, and then you can uh, debug uh, Play Store or Act Play Store, depending on your mode. Um, developer's tools. Uh, some browsers are missing uh, common features like developer tools, for example, uh, an iPad. And Firebug Lite is a Firebug uh, bug in JavaScript. So what we want to do is uh, insert a call to Firebug Lite in each uh, response in order to, to, to get the tool, uh, the Firebug tool in your uh, browser. And as you can see here, uh, it's uh, an extension that I wrote, which is JavaScript Injector, which works fine with uh, BIF, the, the XSS framework. Thanks, like Mikkel, for your tool. And it works fine with doing a man in the middle for mass spawning clients, too. And this is um, the log. Uh, this is the OWASP uh, AppSec website, which was infected, uh, I mean, from my client point of view. And then this is a mobile browser, and I got the uh, DOM processing uh, debugging tool uh, directly uh, on the mobile browser. Okay, um, I will need to go very fast. So, uh, um, uh, some extensions. Next talk is by Roberto, who is here, and which will introduce a very sexy uh, burp extension, which is very complex and everything. So, uh, you just need to. Yeah, it's that complex. It's creating uh, new tabs with, with a lot of buttons, and um, uh, it can control ex uh, third party external tools from the extensions. It's really uh, uh, the way you can do complex things in Burps. And I just want to show um, macros. Oh, this is a very extreme situation. Uh, can I do just this part? And thank you. Um, so, the application um, is authenticated. 
your session is lasting for 15 seconds only, and but you want to work as usual uh, as is uh, as if uh, sessions uh, were not uh, here or you are not uh, automatic automatically um, deconnect from your session and whatever. So you want to want a repeater and scanner and whatever. So this is uh, some details. The first uh, page of the application is processing a login form. The username is user33, the password is secret, and then you access the the, the meet. The meet is um, a page which display your session status, how much time you left uh, you have in your session, and then you have a form and you need to find uh, one value which is between 1 and 100. So uh, it's uh, easy to do, but you have this uh, session uh, problem. So uh, you, you, you can uh, create some macro and uh, do it automatically. And when developing macros, you have this very useful button, which is uh, like the macro debugger. And you will get this kind of output. And you will see everything which is down under the hood by a burp when processing your macro. So it's really the best way to uh, debug uh, your macro. And as you can see here, we check if the session is valid. The session is considered as invalid. So we will uh, use a macro to log to the application and then do our processing. So as a user, you don't need to care anymore from your session. And I will try the live demo. Um, where is OK. So this is the application, as you can see. I logged in the application. I get a form. I submit one. Uh, I still have nine seconds left in my uh, in my session. I try two, then one second left. Then I I will try three, and I will be redirected to the to the login page, and then I wait to log again, etc., etc., etc. And that's what we want to do in an automatic way. Uh, so uh, I define uh, some ses uh, one session hand handling rule and one macro, which is uh, the fact of logging as user 33. And so uh, this is uh, the request. I will ch I will try to check uh, value one. Okay, and as you can see, I have no cookie, so I have there's no way I'm authenticated on the application. I will click on go. Uh, the macro stuff will do its job, and then I will get a new session, which is uh, just created. I have 14 uh, seconds left, and uh, I, I got the cookie, which was added automatically here, and everything is done uh, perfectly well. And if I go to uh, Intruder, I can uh, define uh, some processing, like going from 1 to 100 using the macro. OK, the pop-up menu is on the other screen. Yes. Ah. This is live demo. Okay, so what what can we see? Uh, we get a fresh session. Uh, this is the number of seconds left, and this is a try again. So as soon as we get uh, an item uh, not uh, clicked, we get the right value. As, and you can see, we, we do something like one request per second, then our session die, and then we are auto automatically logged uh, in again, and uh, it happens uh, again here, etc., etc. And then uh, this is not checked, so we found the value, and the value was 33. And we, we don't need to, to take care of the, of the session handling uh, anymore. Um, this is the end of the talk. Um, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, this is not the right time because uh, I was too long. But you can meet me whenever you want and ask questions. You will be welcome. Thank you.